Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Micron Insight 2018. Brought to you by Micron. Welcome back to San Francisco Bay, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're covering Micron Insight 2018. It's just wrapping up behind us. It's a day long of thought leading content around AI, AI for good, how it's affecting you know, the human condition and healthcare and the future of AI. I'm Dave Vellante, he's Peter Burris, and uh, that's the Golden Gate Bridge over there. You used to live right up that hill. Oh, there I it is. is. <laughs> D Mooney is Until here. Until they kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> D Mooney is here. She's the executive director of the Micron Foundation. D, mm -hmm. thanks so much for taking time out mm -hmm. of your schedule and coming on the queue. You bet. It, very pleased to be here with you today. So you guys had some some hard news today. We heard about the hundred hundred million dollar fund that yeah. you're launching, but you also uh, had some news around the foundation. That's right. A grant. You announced two winners of the grant. Tell us about that. That's right. So it was a great opportunity for Micron to showcase its goodness, and what a great platform for us to be able to launch the Advancing Curiosity Grant. Uh, it is all around really focusing on that, on advancing curiosity, in the hopes that we can think about how might AI help for good, whether that's in business, in health, or life, and it's really a great platform for us to be able to be a part of today. So what are the specifics? It was a, a million dollar grant? So it was a million dollar fund, and today we announced our first recipients. It was to the Berkeley College of Engineering, specifically their BEAR, which is Berkeley A Artificial Intelligence Research Lab. Then also Stanford Find Lab, which is the Precision Health and Integrated Diagnostics Lab. And then also a nonprofit called AI for All. And really their focus is to get the next generation excited about AI and really help the underrepresented groups be exposed to the field. So AI for All is, is so underrepresented groups mm -hmm. uh, as in uh, 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 diversity? Females, or? underrepresented groups that might not actually get the um, exposure to this type of math and science in schools. And so they do summer camps and we are helping to send students there next summer. How do you decide, what are the criteria around which you decide who gets the grants and take us through that process? Today, because we are all about goodness and trying to enhance and improve our communities, this was all around how can AI do some good? And so we are taking a look at what problems can be solved utilizing AI. The second thing we're taking a look at is the type of technology we want students and our researchers to take a good look at how the technology can, can work. And then also, what groups are being represented? We want a very diverse group that bring different perspectives and we really think that's our true ability, ability to innovate. Well, there's some real research that suggests a, a more diverse organization solves problems differently, mm -hmm. uh, gets to, to more creativity, and, and actually has business outcomes. Now that may not be the objective here, but, but certainly it's a message for organizations you know, worldwide. We certainly think so. The more people that are, are being involved in the conversation, we think the richer the ideas that come out of it. One more thing that we are taking a look at in this grant is we'd like the recipients to think about the data collection, the privacy issues, the ethical issues that go along with collecting such massive amounts of data. So that's also something that we want people to consider when they're applying. Well, one of the big challenges in any ethical framework is that the individuals who get to write the ethical framework or test the ethical framework, the ethics always works for them. <laughs> and one of the big mm. issues that you just raised is that if there is research that shows that if you put a certain class of people and make them responsible for training the AI system, that their biases mm. will absolutely dominate the AI system. And so these, these issues of diversity are really important, not mm -hmm. just from a how does it work for them, but also from the very starting point of what should go into the definition of the problem, the approach and solution, how you train it. Is that, are you going the full scope or are you looking at just segments of that problem? We'll take a look at, we, we hope to solve the problems eventually, but right now, just to start with, it's the first announcement of the fund. Um, it's a million dollars, like we mentioned, the first three recipients were announced today. The other recipients that come along, we're really excited to see what comes out of that because maybe there will be some very unique 
approaches to solving, solving problems utilizing AI. What other areas uh, might you look at? I mean, how do you determine you know, curiosity and AI? You know, how'd you come up with that? And, 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 and how do you determine the, the topics and the areas mm -hmm. that you go after? So the Micron Foundation, mission is to enhance our lives through our people and our philanthropy, and we focus on STEM and also basic human needs. So when we, when Micron is engaged in large business endeavors like today, talking about AI, it was a perfect opportunity for us to bring our goodness and focus on AI and the problems that can be solved utilizing it. It's a pretty good day today, I thought. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have to say, I mean, I've followed Micron for a while, and you guys can get pretty down and dirty on the technical side, but mm -hmm. it, it was an up-level conversation today. Uh, the last speaker in particular just really made us think a little bit. Absolutely. Talking about, are we going to get to, you know, people Max refer to- Max Tegram, right? I, it, was that is it Max Tegram? Yeah. Oh, they got you. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. and I, c I didn't catch his name, I popped in late. But he was talking about artificial general intelligence, and I know. Was sort of reaching, a, I guess, a singularity, and then he, what struck me is he had a panel of, researchers, mm -hmm. AI researchers, all male, by the way, I think. Yes. And uh, yeah. I noticed that. Yeah, yes, The last one, which too. was Elon <laughs> Musk, who of course we, we, we all know thinks that there's going to be artificial general intelligence or super intelligence. Mm -hmm. And he asked every single pan panel member, will we achieve that? And they all unanimously said yes. So either they're all dead wrong or the world is going to be a scary place in 20, 30, 50 years. Right. What were your thoughts right. on that? Well, it was certainly thought provoking um, to think about all the, the good things that AI can do, but also maybe the other side. And I'm actually glad that we concluded with that because that is an element of our fund is we want the people that apply to it that are, or that will work with to think about those other sides. You know, if these certain problems are solved, is there is there a downside as well? So that is definitely where we want that diverse thinking to come in so we can approach the problems in a, in a good way that, that helps us all. So, limited time left. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about women in tech. So, mm -hmm. we're in California, Jerry Brown just signed a law into effect that uh, I believe it's any public company has to have a woman on the board. On the board. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I, well, personally, I think that's fantastic. Well, you're biased. I, I, oh, yeah. I <laughs> might be a little biased. Um, <laughs> it, I guess it's a little unfortunate we now have to have laws for this to, mm. uh, because uh, you know maybe there's not enough or, or um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, that really aligns well with what we try to do, bring diversity into the workplace, diversity into the conversation. So I, I think it's a good step in the right direction. Yeah, and you know, let's face it, this industry has um, had a lack, really, of, mm -hmm. of, of women leaders. Now we just, we just had, we, we lost Meg Whitman at a huge, you know, Fortune 50 company mm -hmm. in terms of a woman leader, mm -hmm. replaced by Antonio Neri, great guy, we know him well. But, but it, you know, that was sort of one, you know, if you're counting one down. Ginny Rometty, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, huge presence in the industry. But I'm going to ask you, um, what do you think about? I'm going to use the word quotas. Mm -hmm. I hate to use it, but if you don't have quotas, what's the answer? I I don't know about quotas either. We we do know that we help our foundation grants span the pipeline from young students all the way up through college. And we see this pipeline, it starts leaking along the way. Fifth grade, we start seeing girls fall out. Eighth grade is in another the US. big. In the U.S. Not so much in other countries, which is pretty fascinating. But it is, we, we are a global foundation, and when we talk with our other partners, they're also interested in having STEM outreach into their schools because they want to bring in the critical thinking and problem solving skills. So I, I used to think it was quite just a US problem, but now being exposed to other cultures and countries, definitely they have a different approach, but I, I think it's a problem that we all strive to, to overcome. Well, there's some pretty good research that shows that uh, uh, governance that includes women Mm -hmm. is generally more successful. It reaches better decisions. Sure. It reaches uh, decisions that lead to, in the case of boards, greater profitability, more success. So if you can't convince people with data, you have to convince them with law. And so at the end of the day, it would be nice if people recognize that a diverse governance, uh, or d diverse approach to governance, usually ends up with a better result. But if you can't, you got to hit them over the head. I guess so. 
I guess so. Well, I mean, obviously with the Kavanaugh confirmation, there's been a lot of talk about this mm -hmm. lately. There's been some pretty interesting stuff. I got two daughters, you have a mm -hmm. daughter. And for some pretty interesting stuff in our family chat okay. that's been floating around. I saw, uh, I think it was yesterday, my wife sent me a, a, a little ditty by a young woman who was singing a song about how tough it is for men, you know, sort of oh. tongue in cheek, mm -hmm. and singing things like, well, I can't, um, I can't open the door in my pajamas, I can't walk down the street on my phone at night, I, mm. uh, I, 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 I can't uh, leave my drink unattended, mm. you know, so tough for men, so tough for men. So you have, in the one hand, you have the Me Too movement, you have a lot sure. more, uh, since Satya Nadella put his foot in his mouth at the Grace Hopper event, I don't know if you saw that, he I said didn't. that, he said, it was a, CEO a couple of years ago, okay. said a couple oh. years ago, um, a woman in the audience, Grace Hopper, you know, big conference for, for women, asked, mm -hmm. you know, if we're underpaid, should we say anything? He said, no, I think you should just, just uh, that's bad karma, you should wait and be patient. And then of course, you know, you got <laughs> a lot did, of, you know, what for that. Work for and then he apologized for it, yeah. he did the right thing. He goes, you yeah. know what, I'm way off base. And then he took proactive action. But since then, you feel like there's been, what, m certainly much more attention paid to it, the Google debacle of last summer mm -hmm. with the, the employee that wrote mm -hmm. that Jerry Maguire tone. Right, right. <laughs> right. Um, and then the, now the Me Too movement, and now then you see the reaction of women from the Kavanaugh appointment. So you feel like we've made a lot of progress, but then you go, well, hmm, maybe it we have It sometimes feels like that. It sometimes feels like that. In my, my career, uh, t over 20 years, I have had a very positive experience um, working with men, women alike, and, and have been very supported. And I hope that we can continue to have the conversations and raise awareness that everyone can feel good in their workplace and um, you know, walking down the street. And that, like you mentioned, I think that it's very important that we all have a voice and we bring all of us bring a different, unique perspective to the table. So, so do you feel that it's sort of two steps forward, D, and maybe one step uh, back every now and then, or are we it, all making constant progress? It kind of feels or? like that right now. I not, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why, um, but it seems like we're talking a lot about it more now, and, and maybe just with a lot more attention on it, that, that's why it, it's seeming like we're taking a step back. Um, but I think progress has been made, and we have to continue to, to improve that. Yeah, I think if you strip out the politics mm -hmm. of the Kavanaugh situation uh, and then focus on the, the, the impact on women, mm -hmm. I think you take, take a, a different perspective. And I think mm -hmm. that's a, a discussion that's, that's worth having. Uh, on theCUBE last week, I interviewed somebody, she called herself, I'm a fixer. Oh, okay. And I said, you know, here's some adjectives I think of an, 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 a fixer. It's a good listener, somebody who's a leader, somebody who's assertive. Uh, somebody who mm -hmm. takes action quickly. You know, were those the adjectives that were described about you throughout your career? Okay. And, and the answer was not always, right? Sometimes it was, you know, aggressive or, right? I mean, True. you know, that, True. that whole thing, when a, when a woman takes, you know, a, a swift action and is a leader, sometimes she's, you know, called derogatory names. Mm -hmm. when, a, when a man does it, he's seen as a great leader. Right. So there's still that bias that you see out there and so, two steps forward, one step back maybe. Well, the last thoughts on today and well, your mission. We really hope to encourage the next generation to pursue math and science degrees, whether they uh, are female or male or, or however they identify, and we want them to do great and hopefully have a great career in technology. Well, so I'm glad you mentioned that because it's not just about women, it's about people of color and however you identify. So thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, really you appreciate bet. it. Thank you. All right. Keep it right there, everybody. Back with our next guest right after this short break. We're live from Micron Insight 2018 from San Francisco. You're watching theCUBE.